ESPN's Mike Rodak covers the Buffalo Bills. Mike, yesterday Rex Ryan said this. The thing that kind of gives this team a black eye is I let my mouth get ahead of everything. And I think if I would have come in there and just said, hey, we're going to compete and do all that stuff, maybe we wouldn't have you know such a bad feeling about this team. This team doesn't deserve that. I think I could have handled it differently. Will there be any fallout within the organization for Rex Ryan over-promising and under-delivering? Uh, I don't think immediately. I mean, it would really... For that to happen, he'd have to be fired right now, you know, after this season. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, you know, it's only been one year, and, and very rarely do you see a coach fired after one year unless it's a complete debacle. And I don't think, you know, this team ever really reached that stage. It, it got pretty ugly the last few weeks, but uh, I really don't think that enough has happened for Rex Ryan to get fired uh, after this season, at least. But you look further down the road, you look, you know, let's say they don't make the playoffs next season. Well, yeah, you know, if you're if you're Terry and Kim Pagula or if you're Russ Brandon, if he, if he has any say left, you know, in these matters, uh, and you're sitting down with him after next season and you're saying, hey, when you took the podium, you said we're going to make the playoffs. Well, it's been two years and we haven't made the playoffs, so what gives? Um, so I think, you know, long term, there might be some some pushback, some fallback uh, as far as what he said when he, when he, you know, took the reins here and he took the job. I don't think immediately right now uh, that's really what's going to happen. So Rex is keeping his job. Is there anybody on that staff who won't be on that staff anymore? I think it's unlikely. I think if it would be anybody, it would be Doug Whaley. And he's you know the GM, for those who don't know, for what's happened. But you know, you're one year into his tenure. He has four years left on his deal, over $20 million remaining on his deal. So that's not going to happen uh, for him to get fired. And you know, so you're looking for a fall guy. Yeah, I mean, Doug Whaley would be the most obvious choice, but I just don't think he's deserving. I don't think you put yourself in a great spot if you're looking to hire a GM but saying, hey, you need to work with Rex Ryan, you need to find the right players for Rex Ryan, and then have the potential to not have Rex Ryan be your coach one year later. So it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to really fire anybody after this season. Uh, I think the, the most likely outcome would be if the Bills don't make the playoffs next season, then for both Whaley and Rex Ryan to be fired. Buffalo Bills insider Mike Rodak with ESPN. Armin and Levac 104.5, the team. Mike, will Tyrod Taylor be the starting quarterback for the Bills in 2016? He, yes, he's definitely the starter week one next year, you know, barring some sort of injury or you know unforeseen circumstance. But um, I want to call him the franchise quarterback yet. I don't think the Bills are necessarily ready to give him that long-term extension yet. Um, so, I, you know, there's some hesitation on, you know, the long-term aspect of Tyrod Taylor. And, yeah, you know, he's, he's in top five in the passer rating right now. Um, his accuracy is up there, although it's not where it was. <clears throat> you know, his, his completion percentage isn't where it was in the first half of the season, but uh, it's still pretty good and better with, with, from what the Bills are used to. Uh, but where he's really lacking is his record. I mean, he's 7-6 and six as a starter. He's had some games where just hasn't been able to get them back into the game. Anytime he throws more than 30 passes this season, he hasn't won the game. Um, so that's, that's a concern. I mean, the Eagles game a couple weeks ago is probably the best example when he throws that later reception trying to force the ball down the field. They only needed a field goal, and they didn't get it. Uh, so you really need to take the team on his back as a, as a passer, not just a runner, but as a, a throwing quarterback. He needs to show something next season for, I think, the Bills to really give him that long-term commitment. Bills Jets this week, Booby Dixon comes out, says this is their Super Bowl. Is the whole Bills locker room embracing that vibe? Is it that important to everybody? At this point, I mean, they, they've pretty much, you know, they're, they're resigned to their fate. Uh, you know, there are some guys, some rah-rah guys in the locker room like Dixon who he want to call it the Super Bowl. Uh, Virginia Cognito calls it the playoff game. I don't think they're going to go out there and quit, but uh, I don't know if, you know, the aspect or the potential to knock off the Jets is really – uh, appealing, you know, across the locker room. I think there's there's definitely some resignation there that this is the end, and uh, it's starting to think, you know, forward towards the off season into next season. ESPN's Mike Rodak with Armand in the back covers the Bills. Mike, when we look back at uh, Rex Ryan's first season as head coach in Buffalo, what was the defining moment? It might be that entire stretch in November. I think when we all looked at the schedule and it came out in April. And we're looking at, you know, late November, early December, they play five road games in six weeks. Uh, and, and I think a lot of people, you know, figured that that, that stretch would really kill them. Well, they went to New England, they lost. I mean, they went to the Jets first and they won that game. But then they went to New England and they lost. Then they went to Kansas City and they lost. They came home, they beat Houston. 
and they went to uh, Philly and they lost, and they went to D.C. and they lost. So they lost four out of those five road games, and that was what really defined their season. That's what, what really drowned them um, was their inability to pull out some of those games. And Obviously, the Kansas City game is probably the, the best example uh, because they're winning that game, and uh, they, they let it slip away. So that's, that's probably what's going to define the team, and um, I think the defense is – you know, a big reason for that. You know, we look at the the story entering the season was that this defense was likely to continue what it was last year under Jim Schwartz. It was the fourth best defense in the NFL. Rex Ryan said it was going to be the best defense in the NFL. Well, they're twentieth right now, and that's what nobody expected. And I don't think injuries really tell the whole story there. A very small part of the story, actually. I think it's a lot of guys that just weren't picking up the system. That coaches weren't teaching the system, that they weren't adapting to you know, the player strengths, and it just ended up being a disaster on defense for, for quite a while there. And I think that's what, what the season will be remembered for, especially in Rex Ryan's um, eyes. ESPN's Mike Rodak covers the Bills. At Mike Rodak on Twitter. Mike, happy new year, man. Thank you. You as well, guys. Thank you.